Well, me membranous nephropathy is a relatively uncommon cause of kidney disease. Uh, patients usually present with high levels of protein in the urine. Perhaps their creatinine might be elevated as well, indicating they do have some chronic kidney disease. But um, it can look like a lot of other things, like diabetic nephropathy, for example, might look a lot like this. Um, it's been found recently, typically this would be diagnosed on a kidney biopsy. And um, membranous nephropathy is caused by antibodies that deposit in a specific way in the kidney. Um, and it's recently been found that in about two-thirds of the cases, there's a very specific autoantibody against a specific protein called uh, PLA2R or phospholipase type 2 receptor. Um, and these patients tend to respond better to um, immunosuppressive medication. So it becomes important to be able to identify those particular patients. Um, so this is a very a useful way to, to diagnose this particular relatively rare cause of kidney disease. It really should be ordered in, in the right kind of patient. So it should be either be somebody that is known, has already had a kidney biopsy, and we know that they do have membranous nephropathy, and we want to see if they're one of these uh, kind that had this specific autoantibody, or if it's somebody that for some reason maybe could not get a kidney biopsy, uh, maybe they had a bleeding problem, people didn't think it was worth the risk, this might be useful in that specific situation. Or it also could be useful for monitoring the levels of the antibody over time in someone that you know already has this. In general, I would say it should be ordered in people where we really suspect membranous nephropathy or we know they have it. So it's not something I would do just sort of um, as part of a huge panel fishing for things. So if ordered in the right way, it's very specific. If it turns out positive, these are patients that are very likely to do well with various immunosuppressive medications, so you would be much more likely to try that. Um, you really don't want to use those things in people that it might not help because a lot of those drugs are um, do have side effects and might not be useful. So it's very helpful to really nail down that you're in one of these patients where we think this really would work. Um, the other situation where it can be very helpful is looking for the levels to go down with your treatment. Um, uh, it's, it, in membranous nephropathy, even if the treatment is working, it can take up to a year for the protein levels in the urine to go down. Uh, so therefore, um, this actually go, goes down quicker, usually within a month or two. So you can feel confident, even though the protein part might not be getting better, that your treatment probably has worked and you just need to be patient. And then the, the other circumstance where I think it's quite helpful is uh, patients that maybe are going for kidney transplant and maybe you do or don't know that they had membranous nephropathy and you want to see if they're at high risk for um, having it again in their transplant. Before this was developed and discovered, there really wasn't any way to tell this group of patients very well. There were some hints from things on the biopsy, but really um, it was more of a guesswork to know if they might be someone that has this autoimmune kind of membranous nephropathy. So there really wasn't an alternative test. Uh, now that this antibody has been discovered and the, the protein itself, they can stain for it on the biopsy as well, and you can actually see it in patients that have membranous nephropathy. And so that's something that's being done here in, uh, in our labs, in the kidney biopsy lab. They are do also staining for this on cases where it's suspected. And the, the two tests are really fairly complementary, that um, even if we know from the staining that they likely have membranous, um, having the baseline level and then being able to monitor that over time can be very helpful for, for treating that specific patient.